First of all, starting off, I don't care what your opinion is. This is my opinion. I just had to get that out of the way. I honor your opinion, so honor mine, all right? All right, let's get into this. I've rearranged my room a little bit. Isn't that cool? I got a guitar hanging up on the wall. I got another one right there. And then I got my drums back here. And there's another guitar right there and a whole bunch of other, you know, dirty clothing that I need to wash. But yeah, welcome to uh, an original idea. It's totally never been done before, but um, welcome to the Dream Theater tier list uh for their albums all right so as you see i've set up a little bit of a tier list here i figured if i'm going to start doing this dream theater iceberg which i am currently working on the second part sorry it's taken a little bit like i said in the last part school sucks but i figured if i'm gonna be doing this whole uh iceberg thing i should just let you guys know where i stand on dream theater's whole catalog as a list so we got some uh we got some nice original tiers here because all like the s a tier stuff that's boring so down here we got shrimp if you know you know we got kfc chicken because kfc chicken b list nickelodeon actor i i don't remember when i typed this up we got alpha male like this is just pretty good stuff the chad level and then buff squid squidward why are we still here but yeah so let's go ahead and get right into it the only album i'm putting on the shrimp tier which is pretty much the f tier when dream and day unite this is just something that i feel like is just accepted at this point like there's no disputing that that is their worst album the production really isn't that good uh that was their first singer they had i forgot his name but he isn't as good as James Labrie. I think everyone, including the band, wants to forget that this album exists, which is, you know, pretty valid. All right, moving on to KFC Chicken. Um, what am I going to put first? Because I know both of the albums that I want to put in here, and there's only two of them. Um, that is difficult. Self-titled album for me. This album for me, you know, it's just kind of a letdown when a band decides to just go with like a very simple, you know, sleek black cover and then on top of that, name it after the band. That's a huge statement. And this is an album later in their career. So I'm not sure what they were really trying to get across with it, but man, it's just, it's a boring album. I don't know what else to say. I very rarely come back to this album. I think the only song I come back to is Enigma Machine uh, every once in a while. Mangini, uh, I mean, I'll give them credit. They, It's not like they don't put effort into their album. You can tell that they're putting effort. This one just doesn't do it for me, especially with the mix. Like the mixing on this album was super weird. The drums sometimes sounded really good and then sometimes they sounded pretty bad, especially the snare. It just didn't sound good. It's not like St. Anger bad or anything. It's just, it, it doesn't suit my ears. The snare on that album just sounded really weird at some points. And considering how much Mangini just beats the shit out of the fucking drums, you know, it, 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 it wears on you. All right, next one is Falling Into Infinity. This is uh, also another album I covered on the first part of the iceberg. I said that this was an album made as a response to uh, basically uh, push them to make something a little bit more mainstream. And you can definitely hear that on this album. The writing is a little bit simpler, uh, but the whole album just seems a little bit confused. The only reason I put it above the self-titled album is because I like Peruvian Skies and Lines in the Sand, and that's pretty much it. All the other songs on this album I just, I, I don't care about. All right, moving on to B-list Nickelodeon actor. What, what does that even mean, Tristan? Good God. I must've been tired when I typed this up, man. I don't remember doing this. Okay, um, what am I gonna put here? 
This is difficult already. Like, I like all of these albums coming up for different reasons. Let's see. Um, I'll put distance over time. Yeah, I think so. This is their 2019 album, I believe. So it's uh, the second to newest. And uh, I actually have it uh, on our record, so I can play it on my record player. And uh, I enjoy it. There's a few enjoyable moments, like Untethered Angel is really cool. I really like the uh, riff in Paralyze. I think it hits super hard. And of course, At Wit's End is a great song all around. It's got one of the coolest Dream Theater riffs, I think. But as a whole album, it's pretty good. It just it didn't really hit me that hard. One thing I will say is that I think that this is definitely one of the best productions uh, Dream Theater has ever had. Everything sounds fantastic on that album. All right, moving on, we got their newest album, A View From The Top Of The World. This is also a very just kind of eh album for me. The only songs I go back to regular, I would say, is Awaken The Master, The Alien, Sometimes Sleeping Giant or Invisible Monster. The reason I put it uh, higher and distance over time is because I think I like the production a lot more. This is definitely the best production I think Dream Theater has ever had. You can find me on that, but that's just my opinion. The drums sound great. Mike Mangini, like, <laughs> he's just, he's just, a, he's a monster. The thing that drew me back on this album a lot is that Dream Theater as a band sounded a lot like they were trying to sound like Dream Theater, which, is, you know, it's fine. But with 15 albums throughout this huge career, you decided to go back to your tropes, which is fine. I guess that's how they like to write, but you can see that like, you could play the alien next to a whole bunch of other songs. There's actually a great video that does this, by the way, if you don't know who uh, Mike is, become the knight. Big penis! He's actually the one who got me into Dream Theater, so if he ever sees this, thank you, Mike. But it almost sounds like this album was made by, like, a Dream Theater, like... What am I trying to say? Like, almost a Dream Theater generator. Like, it sounds like it was written by a computer. It doesn't really sound human almost, which I, I don't really know. Like all Dream Theater albums have had like a certain level of precision to them. Like they're just great musicians and stuff. But each album has like its, its certain feel. And this album, I just didn't really like the feel. Uh, it's like, it's like I said, it's just all right for me. Uh, it just sounds like they're trying to sound like themselves <laughs> instead of like trying to find new ways to write, which is fine. I mean, they still did a great job. Am I gonna put anything else in there? Yeah, I'll put The Astonishing in there. The Astonishing, I think personally gets too much hate, even though I put it at like the very middle of the road tier. I actually have a lot of respect for that album in particular. I just, I love the way how they stretch their creativity on this album over like two hours, which is a hell of a runtime for an album. And yes, I have listened to it all the way through, but just, there is a lot of songs on this album that I just, I do not care about. I love how it stretched them uh, writing wise. Like there are some of the most interesting Dream Theater compositions on this album, but that doesn't mean I like them. <laughs> uh, there, there are a lot of songs that I do legitimately like going back to on this album, but just for the amount that I like, it's just, there are so, so many songs on this album that I just, I don't care for. So yeah, this, this album, it's not bad. I don't think it's terrible. Like these albums are not bad albums. They're, I think they're actually pretty good. Uh, they're just really middle of the road. And that's all I got for that tier, I think, yeah. All right, going up into Alpha Male, this is when the good stuff starts to happen. Uh, freaking Black Clouds and Silver Linings. I think for a long time, I said to myself a lot that this was my favorite Dream Theater album. 
And I really do like this album. There are a lot of songs on this album that I like. Well, I guess there's not a lot of songs, just like what, six of them? I don't know. But just some really cool stuff. Actually, am I gonna lower that? I really don't know. I'm very divided on this album. Like, th there are some, like I said, there's a lot of s songs that I like. Uh, a lot of long songs on this album. I like A Nightmare to Remember. I think that that's a really killer opening. The Count of Tuscany is <sighs> like mind blowing dream theater like that is the essence of dream theater right there just encapsulated into that one song definitely a top 10 for me the shattered fortress is all right like i can recognize that as a cool ending to the 12 step suite which i'm gonna get into on this next iceberg by the way uh if you don't know what the 12 step suite is but the shattered fortress is a cool ending but i just don't go back to it wither is kind of cringe not gonna lie <laughs> but yeah so this one also is just kind of fine but when the songs hit on this album i think they hit a lot better than these three right here like i said the count of tuscany is a mind-blowing epic for me personally i have a lot of emotional attachment to that song all right next in the alpha male category i'm gonna put octavarium I really do like Octavarium. I think that it's a great album. No shit! The Root of All Evil, all the way through to that title track, which is which is pretty much the best thing they've ever done. That full 24 minutes, for me, just really doesn't go... It isn't wasted. It's a beautiful song, and I really like the concept that they were doing, too. I think I talked about this in the previous video but uh, how it's like you're trapped in the octavarium and your life just keeps going around in circles. I really liked that, how you could just play through it and it would make a circle. I thought that, that was pretty cool. But there, there are just a few songs on here that I just don't really come back to. Uh, I like Panic Attack, you know, there's some classic Dream Theater songs on here, some really classic Dream Theater songs. I mean, hell, it has octavarium on it. Yeah, pretty good. Just. Uh, I know that some people consider this one to be the best Dream Theater album, or uh, it's a lot of people's favorites, I know that. I think even for a time that I said that this one was my favorite as well. But, um, yeah, it's just, it doesn't hit in some of the parts. Oh, this is, this is difficult. Oh, the, the most difficult part about making a tier list is deciding actually what tier. Well, no shit, Tristan. But like, I'm trying to decide where to put one of these albums if they go to Alpha Male or Chad Level. Do I really like them that much? Uh, there's Ziggy. Hmm. What do I do here? Okay, I'm gonna put Awake in uh, Chad Level. I really, really like this album. Uh, it's one of the ones I think I come back to the most. There are just tons of songs that I love on this album. Some people don't like the production, which I get. This is an older album. Uh, but for me, rougher productions, for me, actually work sometimes in the band's favor. Um, one thing I loved about this album was just kind of the rawness that you got out of it. It's such a departure from their first, or not first, album uh it's just a huge departure from images and words which was a lot more progressive uh awake is a lot more mainstream but i think it's has some of their most best written songs i mean just some absolutely killer concepts and themes that are just woven throughout and just such an enjoyable listen oh yeah and of course the drum sound the drum sound baby mike mike portnoy he he buttered my goods on that one Okay, what do I go for next? Uh, freaking uh, six degrees of inner turbulence. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that that's fair to put it up there. I love pretty much every song on the first disc of this album. 
The second disc kind of drags for me, not gonna lie. Without a doubt, my favorite song from this one is The Glass Prison. I think that that's an absolutely great song. The Glass Prison to Misunderstood, to Blind Faith, uh, to The Great Debate, and is there one I'm forgetting? I must be forgetting one. Um, but that whole first disc, I really like. I could just listen to those songs all day long, but the second disc, it really isn't that strong for me. And yes, I know you're supposed to listen to that second disc as if it was one song, but it's divided, okay? It's divided into different songs. I'm, I'm not gonna listen to that long of a song always, okay? I don't go and listen to Octavarium every day. I don't have the time. <laughs> I don't go and listen to that second disc all the way through. It just really drags, and if it is supposed to be all one song, then that song just drags. <laughs> but yeah, so good album, just hasn't hit me like a lot of other people. But like I said, it's in Chad level. These are albums that I still love. All right, this is one that's gonna be slightly controversial, I think. Train of Thought in Chad level. Let me know what you think about this. Now I like Heavy Dream Theater and this album is all heavy dream theater. I think that the writing on this album was really killer. It took a little bit to grow on me, I'll admit. But after a while, I started listening to it and I was like, holy crap, I kind of like every song on this album. Not every song. Uh, some of them don't hit as hard, but like, like I said, this album is just balls to the wall the entire way through. I don't even think that there's a ballad. I mean, Vacant is kind of a ballad, but but yeah, just an absolute balls to the wall album. Great production. I love the production on this album. Like there's just such an intense energy on this album that I don't think we've gotten from Dream Theater since. I think it'd be really cool to get another train of thought like album just from them in this modern day and age. That's what I would like to see. But then again, that's my personal opinion. Some people don't like this album uh, because it embraces that new metal sound some people think they embrace it a little bit too hard which i get it but me as like a thrash head and just i i don't know i just i really like it and i come back to this album constantly all right next is systematic chaos oh boy such a fantastic album so many great songs the persistence of enemies part one and two both blue open the doorway for me for this band, it, that, I think this is the album where it really clicked for me and I was like, holy crap, this is an incredible band. There's just such a great marriage of all the instruments and all the sounds that go through your ears on this album. It really is fantastic. Um, just have so many good songs. Constant Motion, I feel is under, is a little bit underrated. It's kind of like, Dream Theater's pop song, pop metal kinda, but I like the riff in there, it's really cool. Forsaken, Ministry of Lost Souls, oh my god, the Ministry of Lost Souls is so freaking good, dude. That outro probably has one of my favorite melodies that John Petrucci has ever written. Okay, this is a little bit difficult. Now, um... What do I do here? Okay. Dramatic turn of events. Not an alpha male. That is a Chad level album right there. This album, unironically, like has my favorite Dream Theater song ever in Breaking All Illusions. I think that song just is perfect. I don't know any other way to describe it. This whole album, I feel like, is like their most underrated thing ever. You don't see this one talked about a whole lot uh, compared to all these other albums that I've been talking about, but like, this one is really good. You should check it out. On the Backs of Angels is a great opener. Build Me Up, Break Me Down. Bridges in the Sky, and like I said, Breaking All Illusions is a prog masterpiece. I love that song so much. It makes me feel so many emotions. But yeah, this one is like really, really good. This is another album I listened to all the way through and I was like, damn, this is really good. Why don't people talk about this? And 
I, I'm glad to see that I'm not alone on this opinion, you know? There are some people who really do love this album, just like me. And I've gone back to it a lot. Like, these albums in, in the Chad level are probably the ones that I come back to the most when listening to Dream Theater. All right, well, let's get this out of the way. Buff Squidward, Metropolis Part 2, obviously. It's, it's... <laughs> It's just a masterpiece. I don't know what else to say. I love that album. I didn't listen to it all the way through um, when I started getting into Dream Theater. I listened to it all the way through in preparation for this, just to kind of refresh my memory. And I didn't realize how great this album actually is. It really is just a masterclass and an album experience. The story it tells, everything like that, uh, all the writing, it, it all just works for me with this album. And this is another one where it's just like, it's considered to be their best. So it's almost like, duh, it's going to the buff Squidward. I'm such a huge fan of this band. Why wouldn't I put it up there? And then of course, images and words. I don't think I'm gonna get any pushback on these two being in the S tier. The only thing is, is that while these are in S tier, and while I think that these are the best that Dream Theater has to offer, oddly enough, I see myself coming back to all of these albums right here more than these ones. I think these ones have a bigger emotional impact after you listen to them, and just like, they're technically the best Dream Theater albums, in my opinion. But these albums in Chad level, like, I, I come back to these all the time. So yeah, we got like, Shrimp, Never Listen To Again, KFC Chicken, Every Once In A While, Be Less a Nickelodeon Actor, why? Like, I come back to Every Once In A While. These ones are pretty good, but like Chad level and like Buff Squidward. Like these albums are all kind of equal footing for me. These are the ones I go back to the most. I just think Metropolis Part 2 and Images and Words are more technically uh, their best albums. So yeah, that's my dream theater tier list, baby! Let me know what you thought of it. Uh, it's something a little bit uh, different, I guess. Not really original. Oh uh, yeah, so I guess if you like this one, then... I don't know. Watch all the upcoming Dream Theater Iceberg episodes if you want to learn more about dream theater i don't know how to end these so i'm just gonna say goodbye hope you all have a great day or night whatever you're doing while watching this hope you all are just excellent hope you aren't burning alive in a cooler all right i'll see you guys later i'm gonna go sleep Bye.